happy birthday again. Um, let's continue our scientific session after a evening non-scientific ses session. And um, today, uh, today, first speaker is uh, Boris Shapira. Uh, he will talk about several algebras associated to uh, multigraph. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have to apologize. Maybe this topic would not be so familiar to the audience because it's mainly combinatorics, commutative algebra, but that's the closest uh, thing I was doing with Anatol. That's why I decided to present it. And at the end of my talk, he will probably tell us the last part, which I don't know. Uh, so <clears throat> I met Anatoly maybe about 20 years ago when he came to Stockholm for the first time to actually to work with my former colleagues. Some of them passed away, unfortunately. And then our collaboration started in the following format. It con continues up to uh, the present day. And so the standard procedure is as follows. We meet somewhere and Tolle gives me 50 new definitions of 50 new algebras. And I'm trying to arrange a team to work on some of these questions and solve maybe one tenth of what she suggests. And we're currently doing something similar to that again. Okay. Uh, so I'll skip the references. Um, hmm. Should there be a title up there? Okay. Uh, Yes, so let's see. Hmm. Just one second. Is it the last slide I send you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so the, the initial algebra which was studied with my brother in the early 90s was suggested by Vladimir Arnold, who uh, wrote a paper uh, uh, related to quantum. In the title, there is quantum Hall phenomenon effect. And in particular, uh, he studied connections on strata of the complex flag manifold. And he suggested us then students, PhD students, to study the following object. If we look at uh, the space of complete flags in 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 CN, uh, which is SLN mod B, but you can also interpret it as UN, the unitary group mod modular, the n-dimensional torus, and then uh, you can equip the space of complete flags and the standard bundles on the space with Hermitian metric. As soon as you fix a Hermitian metric on the mm, on the original CN where everything lives, so you can equip all the tautological bundles and their one-dimensional quotients Li with induced Hermitian metric, and it can be in fact calculated explicitly. But in any case, the main object would be the curvature forms, which are two forms on this one-dimensional complex, one-dimensional bundles align. And they will be UN invariant forms, two forms on the space of complete flags. And they are normalized, uh, they are normalized uh, churn classes would generate uh, Cogomology, they will lie, oops, too sorry. They will lie in the second cogomology of the space of complete flags, and they will generate the cogomology ring, which you probably know everybody, and the cogomology ring of the space of complete flags is the quotient of the space of polynomials generated by x1 through xn. 
modular, the standard, yeah, the symmetric polynomials, the ideal generated by elementary symmetric functions. Okay, but Arnold, so this is very well known and is the basis of representation theory of symmetric group in many ways and so on and so on. But Arnold asked, what about the forms themselves as opposed to their cohomology classes? These are uh, very nice two forms, left invariant forms on the space of complete flags. What kind of algebra they generate? If our underlying space were a Grassmannian, then a Grassmannian is known to be the symmetric space and the left invariant forms on Grassmannian and the cohomology of Grassmannian algebras coincide. But in case of complete flags, this is no longer the, the situation, although there is a standard subjective homomorphism from the ring generated by curvature forms to the cohomology. Of course, uh, yes. And so uh, using some deep results of Griffiths and Schmidt from the 769, it was possible to write those curvature forms explicitly and as a result to get the algebra structure there. So say for complete flags in C4, we have four standard linear bundles and their curvature forms can be represented in, in the as follows. So they will be sums of standard two forms which are obtained as the wage of the positive root and the negative root on the space of complete flags uh, is, is a linear combination of those. In particular, the first one would be a plus B plus C, where these are products of one, the roots one, two, and the negative root. And this would be one, three, and the, and the respondent negative, and this would be one, four. Uh, so those new variables, A, B, C, D, F, would be uh, squares of them since they are uh, exterior elements would be zero, and there are no other relations between them, between A, B, C, D, F. So as the result, what we get, uh, if we think about relations among Ws, we see that the fourth power of each W vanishes, uh, and then the sum of any two to the fifth power vanishes, and the sum of any three to the fourth power vanishes again. And finally, the sum of all four vanishes. Um, and, um, and even simply example would be if we take flags in, in, in C3, and then uh, we have three curvature forms whose sum is zero and the uh, cube of each of them and cube of any two and of sum of any two will vanish. As the result, the uh, mm, Hilbert polynomial of the quotient ring would be one, two, three, one. And the corresponding cohomology of the flag space is one, two, two, one. So there is an additional Entry three here, which dies when we go from cohomology, from we go from forms to their cohomology. And in general, if we are working in, in the space of complete legs in the n dimensional space, we'll get the following situation. Uh, so we can, uh, so <clears throat> the ring formed by uh, Curvature forms would be isomorphic to the polynomial ring in Ws divided by the following ideal. Instead of the ideal of the symmetric functions, we'll be getting another thing which has two power n minus one generators associated to all non empty subsets of our set W1 to Wn. 
And to each subset of vertices, we'll have a generator of the following form. We add up um, Ws corresponding to this subset and raise them to the power, which equals to the dimension of Grassmannian plus one. Grassmannian, if we're picking J of uh, elements from our subset, we should raise to the dimension of Grassmannian of J planes in N and plus one. So uh, an interesting thing here is that the total dimension in particular of this algebra equals to some funny number. So if you can see the complete graph on N vertices, labeled vertices, uh, then the total dimension equals to the total number of forests in this Oh, subgraphs which are uh, with without with no cycles in this complete graph on n vertices, and there is a natural monomial basis, and monomials are labeled by these forests. So, since there are many people doing representation theory, maybe you can tell me there is an S and action on this algebra. What what is the irreducible? What What's the decomposition in the sum of irreducibles here? I don't quite know. Yes, yes. That's a commutative algebra of dimension equal the number of forests, and we have a natural as an action on it. Should be decomposed in the sum of yeah. What's the structure of the morning? So this is the algebra generated by coach. So, and it's an obvious as a module in this case. Okay, yes. Um, yes, okay. Now, one can generalize this construction from the case of complete flag to the case of any undirected graph with no loops, uh, and we know a lot of nice things about the correspondent commutative algebra uh, and connection to graph theoretical properties, uh, but it would be very nice to have some geometric interpretation, which is still missing, unfortunately. By loops, you mean really loops that go from one loop to the other, not, not self loop. Yeah, so okay. Now um, here is uh, the gadget. So if you have a undirected graph without loops, now consider the graded commutative algebra generated by its edges with the relation that the square of every edge vanishes. So square free algebra generated by edges. And now you can associate to each vertex the following obvious sum. <clears throat> and this algebra was independently discovered in my metroids. So you can label your vertices in arbitrary fashion uh, up to isomorphism. The resulting algebra would not be dependent on the labeling. And to each vertex, you associate the sum of, of its of edges going through this vertex with coefficients plus minus one in the following simple way. So you're sitting in this vertex and you're looking. If the other ver vertex for this edge has a bigger number, we associate plus one and smaller minus one. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so there are many ways. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the ambient algebra, which is spanned by square free edges, you take these linear generators formed by vertices and you ask which subalgebra you will get. And it turns out so that uh, you can formulate relations among 
those vertex generators in a fairly straightforward fashion, which is quite similar to what you, to what I told you about this initial example by Arnold. And uh, the relations are as follows. You pick any subset of vertices, call it capital I, and then look how many edges go, go from I to I complement. And you call this number by, oops, what have I done? Sorry for that. So D capital I is the number of edges going from I to I complement, and you uh, associate to this thing a generator, which is the sum of Xi's raised to the power D capital I plus one. And that's exactly what happens in case of a complete flag where you split a complete graph into I and I complement, the number of edges going from one part to the other would be exactly the dimension of Grassmannian uh, and plus one. Okay, good. <clears throat> uh, so one can show that uh, this original algebra generated by vertices, which is a subalgebra and the quotient algebra module of the relations I just stated are isomorphic. And uh, you can also, um, these are graded algebras, so you can look at the Hilbert polynomial can even specify uh, what the dimensions in each graded component would be. For this, I have to introduce some more combinatorial terms or graph theoretical terms related to that polynomial. But let me do this very quickly. And these notions um, can be defined for any matroid as well. Uh, so if you have a tree or, so first of all, you have to label edges. And again, the numbers will be getting an independent of, of which way you label the edges. But once you label the edges of your graph and you have a tree or a forest, which is a graph with no cycles, now you say that an edge lying in the complement to your tree is called externally active. If when you edit, you get a cycle, and in this cycle, this edge, the new edge you're adding has the minimum. Yeah. Well, you label your edges, yeah, and then, but I mean, the particular choice of externally active edges will depend on your labeling, but the numbers you count is not so. Okay. So, so the external activity is the number of this external, of, of a tree or a forest is the number of these edges, and you can count how many spanning forests or trees you have with this given external activity. And this thing is independent. Okay, and so then you have a more refined result. Uh, you, the total dimension of this algebra equals to the total number of spanning forests in your graph, G, and the dimension of the cave graded component is also can be given in terms of the number of spanning forests with a certain relation for the external activity. Okay, good. Yeah, you have, uh, you can derive the Hilbert, poly can re express the Hilbert polynomial in terms of the Tat polynomial of this graph. Uh, Tat polynomial can be defined, one of the definitions of the Tat polynomial, maybe heard of it, is through external and internal activities uh, generating functions. And it turns out that uh, uh, my former student, Gleb Dinashev, and Toller's collaborator nowadays has proven that if you have two graphs and you look at those algebras, 
then the algebras are graded algebras are isomorphic if and only if the graphical matroids of graphs coincide. And uh, there are some graphs with the isomorphic graphical matroids, but not isomorphic themselves. But this is already very, very strong information about the given graph. Yes, let me see. Uh, so how much time do I have just not to go over time? Huh? Half an hour. Um, yeah, okay, 20 minutes, okay. Um, so 20 minutes, yes. There is, there is a version of this business where one can do it for directed graphs and then you can get an algebra which is which counts uh, the number of spanning trees and the number of spanning trees appears in many places uh, is related to this famous uh, Kirchhoff theorem uh, the number of spanning trees comes as determinant of the Laplace, the truncated Laplace matrix of a graph. It's a fact which is used in many, many places. And uh, there is also, a, again, combinatorial interpretations. Part of this conference is combinatorial. You can talk about the so-called parking functions. So parking functions is a, again a combinatorial object studied quite quite substantially since maybe they appeared in the 60s and Richard Stanley made a special effort in uh, yeah advertising parking functions. So a parking function of size n is a sequence of non-negative integers b1 through bn such that there is its increasing rearrangement satisfying the conditions CY. Oops, what happens? I wonder. Uh, the condition that C CI is smaller than I. And the uh, parking functions of si size N are known to be in bijection with uh, uh, trees on labeled N plus one vertices. And there is a famous formula by Cayley, <clears throat> sorry for that, uh, not quite sure what happened. Uh, uh, so this is the famous number of labeled trees discovered by Cayley around 1870 and parking functions is a way to, to label uh, this object. Okay, so Postnikov and myself has introduced uh, the correspondent notion for any graph, the notion of G parking function. And uh, we found the algebra which one can associate to any directed graph. And as a consequence to any undirected graph, considered as a directed graph where each edge has both, both orientations, one and forth, back and forth. And you can uh, get the uh, correspondent algebra. It's, uh, there are two versions. There is a monomial version of, uh, the, the, the two algebras, in fact, one monomial algebra and one polynomial algebra, which have exactly the same Hilbert C series, exactly the same combinatorics, which is governed by this uh, G parking functions. Yeah. Can you show again? Where? Example. Uh, what is LG? LG is the Laplace matrix of the graph. This is Kirchhoff's formula, yeah. So the number of spinning trees in the graph, you do the following. You take the Laplace, you know what Laplace matrix of a graph is. You can remove any row and any column. So Laplace matrix is degenerate, its determinant is zero. But if you remove 
I think any row in any column. Well, Laplace matrix is the is the matrix where you it's a square matrix which you put valences, and then on the main diagonal you put minus. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Laplace matrix is as follows: it's a square matrix labeled by vertices. In this here you put the number in in general for a multigraph the number of edges from this guy to that guy, and then. You compensate it on the main diagonal by taking minus with the whole valence. So Laplace matrix itself is degenerate, determinant is zero. But then if you if I remember correctly, you can make any, you can take any minor by removing any row in any column. The resulting matrix has a determinant equal to the number of spanning trees in your graph. Uh, well, that's the number-oriented spanning trees. That's what I'm saying. This would be the dimension of the correspondent ambient algebra. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the. No, no, that has nothing to do with that. Yeah, okay. And there is a, a, yes, there is a similar algebra, which is not monomial. So there is a monomial version where exponents of monomials are given by this G parking functions. And there is a polynomial algebra with exactly the same combinatoric, which looks quite similar to what we had in the Arnold's case for uh, for forests, uh, so you you have the same generators which are labeled by subsets of vertices. You take the sum of your generators over this subset and raise it to the power now a di without plus one. So where di is the number of edges from this subset to its complement. And again, in case of a complete flag, you get an algebra SN module whose total dimension is the number of trees. And maybe you know what this module is. Is there some natural module, SN module of total dimension, the number n plus one power n minus one? Double coinvariant. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, but do you have any explanation why the hell? Yeah, yeah, but do you know why why one is isomorphic to the other? Do you have the proof? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I heard about Hyman, I forgot about this, but why this is Hyman's module? Um, yeah, okay, maybe, yeah, okay, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, maybe let me skip most of it and go to Tolia's ideas. Uh, well, Tolia, Tolia visited Stockholm, I think it was 05 maybe. He suggested what you are doing is very interesting, as he politely said, but let's twist it. Let's take K theoretical analog of that. So, and consider filtered algebra, which is generated by ex exponentials of your generators. You take the same, so you take a graph, you take the ambient algebra, which is uh, generated by square free edges. Then you associate to each vertex a plus, uh, sum of edges coming into this vertex with plus minus sign, but then take E power. So instead of kind of cohomology of the flag variety, you 
get the K, K theory. Well, these are so far, unfortunately, dreams. We don't quite know, or at least I don't know quite know where actual relation to K theory, whether it exists here, but at least it was a commutative algebra we studied. And uh, it turns out to be also real nice. We can, uh, one, it's possible to do it for an arbitrary graph and get reasonable uh, relations for this algebra and represent it both as a subalgebra and as a quotient algebra, get to isomorphic things. Um, and this time, interestingly, these K theoretical analogs now will distinguish graphs. So, uh, so yeah, two graphs are isomorphic if, if the K theoretical algebras are isomorphic as filtered algebras. Uh, that time, yeah, uh, that again was proven by Gleb Minasha, very talented young mathematician who recently returned to St. Petersburg. Um, yeah, so we made a lot of experiments with those. Uh, we, we unfortunately still don't know the, so the total dimension of this algebra would be the same. Uh, it would be the, mm, it, it, it actually coincides as a subspace of this amb ambient algebra generated by square free edges, but it has a different filtration there. So we, we, we have chosen a different system of generators and with respect to this system as the generators, it has a different filtration as our original algebra. And although we calculated, I don't know, about a hundred different examples in Macaulay, we still have no idea what the graph theoretical meaning of uh, uh, coefficients of its Hilbert polynomials are. It definitely cannot be expressed through tough polynomial anymore. And, but even for some quite simple graphs, we still have no clue what well, those numbers which add up to something very simple. Uh, I'll probably show you some examples soon. Um, ba, 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 ba. Um, yes. Uh, okay, so the last thing maybe I want to say that uh, uh, instead of taking, let me, just check where this statement is. Okay, so the last twist I want to talk about is, so instead of taking, yes, here. Uh, to, yes, okay, okay, okay. So the last twist I want to say that the totally suggested to use instead of regional generators, e power of the regional generators, but since this squares of all edges is zero, this, this is some polynomial. And now actually you can uh, think as follows. Say if you fix some polynomial f, maybe it's good if f of t and it, maybe it's good, the constant term would not be relevant for us, but let's assume that it starts with t plus and so on. Then we can associate uh, this polynomial and algebra in the original generators to which we apply this polynomial f. So in Toller's case, we, we were applying e power, we can apply any, any function f. And it turns out that um, similarly to the result which Gleb proved for the exponential function, if your, fun if your polynomial f has a nonlinear, a non-vanishing linear term and a non-vanishing quadratic term, such algebras would be isomorphic if and only if the regional graphs are isomorphic. And also you don't have to go in degree further than the maximal valency among the vertices of your graph. So you actually have a modular space, which is a space of polynomials of degree at most the maximal valency of the graph. 
And in this space, different choices of polynomials may result in different Hilbert series for, for the correspondent algebra. And the very naive conjecture would say that if uh, Hilbert polynomials are the same for all possible choices of f, then the graph should be isomorphic. Because so we have a theorem saying that if two algebras are isomorphic as algebras, then the underlying graphs are isomorphic. But this is a very strong statement. One wants to have combinatorial information which will govern the isomorphism of the graph. And the suggestion for such thing would be to look at Hilbert series associated to different Fs. And if those coincide, then the graph should coincide. We don't have to check the isomorphism of algebras. And so far, in all our examples, this seems to be the case. And uh, maybe I can finish by showing you some tables. <coughs> uh, which we don't know their combinatorial interpretation. So this is a very trivial situation. Our graph is just, uh, just a path. No, no, I'll show you this as well. And um, so this is a path. I think this is three vertices. Yes, this is four vertices, five vertices, and so on. Um, so, and we are taking the polynomial u plus u squared. We don't have to go any further in degree since the maximal valence is just two. And uh, we can scale the coefficient so in front of u squared. So this, this is enough to consider. And so we have Hilbert series, which add, adds up to two power n. And we don't know what these numbers are. So this should be just two power n is the set of all subgraphs in a path. But we have some guesses for, 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 for these columns. Do you as much as they go to? Yes. No. No. Well, I can explain, yes. Maybe, yeah. If, if you're interested, I will tell you. So this is a filtered situation you have to take. Yeah, the associated graded, blah, blah. But I mean, Macaulay does it. No problem. And we have for for... We are fine, a n as well, and uh, you know this continues forever and forever and forever, and we have no clue what those things are. Well, representation theory works nice for a complete graph. There, there is a sun action, but even in this case, we definitely don't know. It would be very nice to, to share this with somebody. It's very plausible. Yeah. With what? Well, group action happens only in special cases, but already for the case of complete leg, where, where they have a set module, this would be very nice to get connection to representation. We, we haven't done that. Mm -hmm. It's not done. It's an open problem. Open problem. But he, well, he... Well, I mean, you can you have combinatorial guesses in some cases, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. But the, the last thing I want to mention is that it Tolia with. Uh, but Gleb, he did a further generalization. Maybe he can substitute me here and 
talk about this. Uh, it's a nice paper about Q deformations of this original algebra. With, and there are two versions. One, you deform it with a single parameter, you get a kind of icky version. And then you put a, spe a separate parameter on each edge, you get another version of that with a lot of nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we would be so happy to get a little bit more geometry. And recently, Tolle suggested a new version, which he called the non Hermitian version of all that, which seems to have excellent properties, very nice properties, and comes from his work on non commutative algebras as usual. And those algebras are related to what Dunkel elements. The commutative algebra generated by Dunkel elements of this ambient huge non commutative things. Okay, I hope I haven't killed you by this material. Thank you so much. Yeah, one, one last thing. One last thing. No math, of course. Yeah, where is it? Yes, this thing. I really love this picture. <laughs> yeah, who did this, Toda? Huh? Who is the author of the Yes, who is the author of the picture? Uh -huh. We need some filter and that I okay, actually define this. Okay. So is it you? Is it you? Uh, comment. Maybe this comment will be not very satisfied for uh, audience, but uh, uh, Boria mentioned several times the K theory. And really, it is my suggestion that classical graph theory related on the cohomologies and related on uh, uh, trivial formal groups x plus y. But uh, it's uh, really observation of Grotendieck and many other people's that K theory related with the uh, multiplicative uh, formal groups x plus y minus xy. Yes, and uh, many constructions which presented by Borea really have a meaning in a K theoretical sense if we replace uh, standard uh, uh, tat relations, uh, contraction and uh, uh, deletion rules on its uh, K theoretical analog. Yes. And uh, probably numbers which appears in uh, K uh, theoretical generalization is uh, uh, corresponds to the coefficient of corresponding the uh, uh, so I just uh, want to draw attention of audience to study uh, classical graph theory from a K theoretical point of view. Thank you. More questions? Hey, we have 10 minutes.